Hello, my name is Chad Adams. I work with Skeleton Key in St. Louis, Missouri, and we're making this movie to show you a couple things to keep in mind while working with custom dialogues. In this example, I want to show you that when we create a custom dialogue, we don't have control over where that dialogue is going to show or what size it's going to be. Let's take a look. So here we've popped up in our custom dialogue, um, and it came up right in the middle of the screen. That's where it was at last time. If the user is to move this over and then hit OK, the next time they pull that up, it will remember where it was moved to. And it will also remember what size it was. If we make this larger, I can see here that there's actually some more text in here. As the user, I didn't know that was there until I made it larger. And as the developer, I couldn't automatically make this larger to begin with. But whenever I clear that and hit it again, the dialog remembers the size and comes back up again and it's the same size. We can see that one more time. If I move it over, smaller. When I bring it up again, that's right where it's at. In example two, I wanted to point out that when you're recording information through the input field, you have to use button number one to record that information. Buttons two and three are both treated as cancel buttons. Let's take a look at an example. If I throw up our dialog, and let's say I want to record a discount here, I can record the discount, let's say 10%, and use my percent button, we'll see if the field gets changed in the background. Whenever I do an amount, let's say we're going to um, discount this by $5, and I use an amount, I still have 10% in the background. The amount button was treated as a cancel button. It would be the same if I had a, a number three button here as well. Um, just because we changed the text on the button, FileMaker still treats this as a cancel button and does not um, take the, the text and replace it. So again, I can put this in at 35%. And I can put it in at $10 and the 35% stays. This is true whether you're using global fields or whether you're using a regular text or number fields. It, it doesn't take no matter what type of field you, you use, the dialog does a cancel when we use anything other than button one to record that information. In this example, we want to demonstrate that the buttons on a dialog um, are not adjustable in size. Right, let's take a look at the example. Here in this button, you can see I have canceled the process, and here I have continued the process both of which are being cut off because the text is just too long for the buttons. The buttons are a fixed size and they do not grow as you enter longer text. In this example, we want to demonstrate that when you use the get last message choice function, which is the function you'll use to determine what button the user clicked, um, this function returns a number, not the text on the button. Let's take a look. So here I've got um, buttons 1, 2, and 3. And as I choose button 3, you'll see that my, my next thing shows here, you've clicked button number 3. If I were to choose 2 and 1, and to show an example of how that's being generated, um, you see here I'm just throwing up that second dialog with you clicked button number and then the get last message choice. And so that's demoing that the, the button returns the number not the text. While we're here, I want to go ahead and demo something else, and that is that the buttons are backwards in the dialog as they are shown on screen. So default button is 1, button 2 is in the middle, button 3 is on the far right, and as you look at that um, here, button 1 is on the far right, button 2 is in the middle, button 3 is on the far left. In this example, I want to show that um, custom dialogs have to have a button to dismiss them. Um, sometimes it'd be nice to have a, a dialogue that popped up for a certain length of time that would then go away on its own, but custom dialogues just don't offer that option. Let's take a look at our example. So you can see here I've got a dialogue that says good job and continue. And if I go into our, our script and I try to change that, FileMaker will kind of let me believe that this is going to work. I can take the text out of the, the, the buttons here and hit OK and then save that, close it, close it, try it again. You can see that FileMaker has put the button back in for me with the text OK. So FileMaker um, has to have a button there to dismiss the custom dialog, and it didn't really prompt me or warn me that it was going to put something back in. It just did that um, on its own. So it's a little bit hidden. I want to go ahead and let you know that it was there. In this example, I want to show two things. First of all, that custom dialogs offer you up to three input fields. And secondly, whatever text are in the field you specify for in the input field, um, it comes up in the dialog if there's any text there. So for example, I've got three fields here. I have some text, more text, and yet some more text. As we throw up our example, I get three fields here, um, which is the option for custom dialogs, and that text is already in these fields. So as I change this, we can see it change. Once I close that dialog, we're going to get that changed to something else. 
And then when I bring it back up again, you can see that it's there. So things to keep in mind is you're wanting uh, a dialog to come up and the user to capture data. Um, if you're using some, some sort of a global field as this uh, field here, you're going to want to clear that global field before you bring up your dialog so that you get rid of any lingering uh, text that may have already been in the field or may have been used last time. In this last example, we wanted to demo um, that although you do have to have a button to dismiss the dialog, you do not have to have a default button. So this is really is kind of an extension of example number five. And what I mean by that is that, let's flip the example, we don't have to have a default where the user can just use the enter key or the return key to dismiss the dialog. Um, this is handy for when you want the user to, to be more careful in reading the dialog um, and not just dismissing it out of habit where they actually have to grab the mouse and do something with the mouse. You've been watching Dialog Phone with Skeleton Key. We hope you've learned something new, something you can go out and use. And so go out there, create databases, and have fun with your dialogues.